someone offered me 26 million for like a percentage of a company already. And I said no. Initially, we invested 250K into the business. Millionaires sell music and billionaires sell products. Crept is gonna be a billionaire. <laughs> you waiting for somebody to bring your career to you? You're not gonna have a career. You gotta go get it. The reason why I do everything over the music right now is it wasn't a choice, there was no option. I feel like, what, for nine years, I've never seen a penny from music sales. As well as being a musician, you're a brand. We've always had a British dream in comparison to the American dream. We've got our Jay-Zs. We've got our Puff Daddies, man. We can do anything. I don't want to be pigeonholed as a, you know, a rapper, artist. I want to be able to see as someone that can do multiple things, have multiple sides to them, whether it's, you know, music, business, being a dad. There's so many different moments where I've had that, like, is this even real? Like, like the music's actually taking us here. Even when in our mobile, when we had all the man on stage. We had a show in Jerusalem, bruv. And they were singing our song. And then when we was leaving, they was chasing the car like, bah, 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 bah. Hey, hey, there's so many people that have left the scene. Mad thing, man. And I can't see them anymore. Where are you? Where are you now? Where? Can't see you in the yeah, I said it in my SPTV. SPTV, the entrepreneur. I said that without even realising that's what I was going to become. A radio host, I present, TV shows music and my business with Camo Vodka. you got to be passionate for it, I guess. My success here should be about people that I'm never going to meet, family members that I'm never going to meet, because they come 100 years after me. Music isn't something I do, it's something I am. Before I received any finance for rapping, I was happy to do so. Now I'm able to look after my family and continue to make music and it pays me. I almost feel like I've got some cheat code or something. It doesn't even feel justified. Yeah. Tell her don't waste my time. Police wanna stop me, search my clothes. What? Tell them don't waste my time. If it ain't money, I ain't involved. Millionaires sell music and billionaires sell products. UK rap is a hidden economic success story. It's not talked about or understood or studied nearly enough. In the last five years, hip hop is the only genre in the UK that's grown year on year. The only genre to grow year on year in that time. It's grabbing people's attention. It's the defining cultural force of our time. In the UK, you've got Wretch, Crept, Leisha, all following in the path that's well trodden in the US building these businesses, building these brands, monetizing audiences way beyond music building the culture. Just 3% of UK rap artists earn at least £50,000 a year from their recorded music. Just 3%. I think rappers are definitely more successful in venturing out to different businesses now because they're realising they can capitalise off the following they already have built from music. I hold it down like a Snapchat. Go over your head like a snapback. Uploaded a pic, double tap that. And your flow so old, grandad. Social media is a big, big part to selling any product now. Me, from an estate who doesn't have money, but I have an iPhone, I can now compete with someone's business who does have a startup money, because as long as I can build awareness, because that's what helps sell your business. If you've got money, you can do flyers. If you've got money, you can do adverts. If you've got money, you can do radio adverts, TV adverts. You can do so many things to put a product in people's face. Before, you would have to pay huge amounts of sums to be on television, to be on billboards, or to be in newspapers. Where now, I can essentially download a free app, and tomorrow, 
after doing some funny dances, you don't want to see me doing dances, have a million people following me. That's a huge opportunity for people to build up a marketplace that they can sell stuff. So when you're tapping into the fan base you already have and you're just utilising that for another business, you can't go wrong, do you know what I mean? So it just kind of made the playing field a lot more even. So, for example, when we released the three flavours of Cameron Vodka, I went onto my TikTok account, I've got a million followers on there, but not a million people are going to see it, but well, I'm thinking that. And I've gone and done, like, one of the most popular viral things that's happening, which then brought loads of new people onto my page, because I said, this is my brand, isn't it? And there's loads of people in the comments saying, where can we get it and all that? and it's going on the For You page. That's like where anyone worldwide can see it. But I've got a new wristwatch. Let's go toe to toe, flip flops. I make the crowd jump like crisscross. I've got a dark skin friend that looks like Rachel Dozel. Mm -hmm. And I've got a light skin friend that looks like Rachel Dozel. Which one's Rachel? <laughs> I've never in my life, you know, thought I'd be doing baby skincare. Not once in my life, but Life took me there. Camo Vodka, the reason that came about is because during lockdown, everything was still then. There weren't no performances, there was no music, nothing. Brew Machine is the name of the company. It's a CBD brand. The THC level that we're, you know, allowed to have in these products is minimal. It's like, it's 0.2. It doesn't get you high. That's the first thing people come in and say, whoa, is this going to get me? No, you don't get high. It's calming. It's balance. Do you get what I'm saying? It's. It's, it's, it's medicinal. We researched and found out that it's about $75 billion in the vodka industry. So we were just thinking, yeah, like, we only need one percentage of that. We'll be all right. It was a case of, got this idea. We knew what we wanted to call it. We knew our daughter's name was like, Nala's baby, this makes sense. We need a zero-rated, natural, clean product. It don't exist. We found the Alchemist. We figured out what liquids, what tastes, what flavours we wanted, what bottle designs, all of that. That was all sorted within the team. And we would the lab back and forth in, and then they would send it back here and say, yeah, we got it to X amount percent natural. And we're like, nah, it needs to be more, it needs to be more. We just wanted to see what would happen in it, so we released three flavours first. Green Machine is like, I am the rap equivalent. If you ask Rich for a verse, you're getting, this is what you're getting. Within CBD, this is what we're delivering. We're about to go into another 200 more stores. So rock with the eyes. Live life, never worry about the price. Fake fire like You know, before our rap scene and our rap culture was as big as it was today, we only could look at, you know, the American culture of, you know, the power moves that they made. Diddy is a business and a brand. He's now able to attach himself to create a next brand, which is Ciroc. Do you get what I'm saying? Which then he brings back into the business where his brand is normally associated with hip hop and he markets it through that. Do you get what I'm saying? Ciroc with the eyes. Live life, never worry about the price. Fake fires, I can see it in your eyes. Yeah, she just wanna get told off. Yeah, after the conversation with Diddy, it was like, he just made me feel charged. His whole energy is just like, we can do anything. They definitely set the levels, they laid a blueprint, and we'd be stupid to not copy it, to not use it, to not find what we can, you know, we can own and we can have for ourselves. Because I think, above all, it's about trying things, and beyond that, it's about ownership as well. In the US, Dame Dash or Master P, set the path many years ago with transitioning from recording music to building products and brands and media companies as well. And in the UK, we're starting to see the start of that now. You tell me a company that makes a comic book, a children's book, a comedy, a drama, a magazine, a streaming service and a television network, directs the movies, writes the movies. Who does that? I was 100% confident that whatever I was doing was going to affect the whole world in a big way. You know, I like the fact that the UK artists have taken this independent template and taken it to different levels. When I uh, see that artists have their own buildings, with a bunch of collective of artists and they're independently making things happen on their own terms. That's the type of shit I'm talking about. It's always supposed to be about the verticals. The music is just a vehicle to promote all the other things. The music showcases your point of view. But when you're an artist, 
You're supposed to have good taste in everything. I can't remember if it was Diddy or one of them said it, and it was like, music makes meals, clothing on the business, 100 millions. Did you have a clothing label? Yeah, I had a clothing one as well. I had one called Retro Boys. And that made me understand the margin of profit in different areas. I do an octopus, right? It's the artist and all the legs are the verticals. So each one of them legs have to be stimulated. It's a movie, it's a documentary, it's a book, it's a calendar, it's a philanthropy. You know, it's all the ways that this one thing is gonna stimulate this. And if one leg doesn't work, you cut that shit off and something else will grow back, it doesn't affect the head. I was an entrepreneur before I, we sold music, I sold drugs. And if you can survive in the street, this other is easy. Street business and business is the same principle. It's just one is illegal and one is legal. We've always had a British dream in comparison to the American dream. We just never had 40 acres to chase after, right? Get access to free education, which our American cousins don't have. Use that to climb the social mobility ladder and then go into the world of work or business with the knowledge and information that you have to better your life and be in a better position than your parents were. We've got our Jay-Z's. We've got our Puff Daddies, man. I do believe in England, man. I believe in our talent. Seeing that, you know, minority of their net worth is from their music and majority of it is from the moves that they made, made me realise there's so much more to them just being an artist. The fakes never last, whoa, whoa, whoa. She didn't rate me at the star, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now she wanna hit me like it's calm. Nine years, we was with the same label. So our deal was so mad, yeah, that even if we made them back the money that they spent, we still wouldn't have recouped. I feel like, what, for nine years, I've never seen a penny from music sales. For nine years. Sorry, say that again. <laughs> So with a label, it's 80-20. So 80% to the label, 20% to the artist. But you recoup from your 20% only. So if they spend a million pounds and you make them back a million pounds, you've only recouped 200 grand. And because of that deal, it made man so hungry that we just done so much other things. In terms of like the people in the label, they never ever gave us stress or like I said, you can't put this out. Everything we bought to the label, they was like, yeah, cool. Music video, this is the idea, this is what it's gonna cost. Cool, like, they did do that. I was in my album camp, so that's like Bear Producers in a house in the wilderness. And I was just like, thinking about like, right, how could I make a song like like from from two sides, like speak about things that men are annoyed with about women and things that women are annoyed with about men. First of all, I hate the way you talk to me. But I can't stand when you're ignoring me. Pardon my French. With anything that's worth having, like, there's got to be a little bit of risk that you're willing to take there. And if you believe in something as well, don't be afraid to, you know what I'm saying, spend your money on yourself and your own dreams. Haven't even planned for the stock yet and how we're going to facilitate boots if we get listed. If we're going to get this much boot stores, we're going to need to order hundreds of thousands of bottles. Like hundreds of thousands of bottles. I'm saying, what do you mean, like hundreds of thousands of bottles? Do you know how much money that is? The hustler mode was like, yo, spoke to my financial advisor, said, yo, look, this is what we, we want to do. It's like, who cool, make an investment pitch and you just got to go around pitching to me. Hey, 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 now. Might spend 20 because I'm getting it. So now I've got to raise seven figures in a couple of months. So was, I think for the whole of like December to January, just back to back, just sitting on Zoom calls, going to presentations and just pitching it to people, to strangers. And they're all just in their suits, like, 
I'm pitching it to my brethren, like Conan is one of the people that I'm pitching it to. Like I'm pitching it to everyone around, man. Everyone that we pitched was like, yeah, I want it. There was so much risk in, in what we did, but again, like, you know what I'm saying? Scared money doesn't make no money. Someone like myself, I never wanted to have a credit card because I have enough money to buy what I'm trying to buy. So I don't understand the principle or the reason of why the world respects a credit card owner. So I'm just doing everything, paying, 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 paying when it's come to time to buy my house. They're like, well, your credit's not good. I'm like, how can my credit not be good? I have, like, I have money. It's like, yeah, you can have money, but we don't know that you're trustworthy. The credit rating and its impact on individuals has to be talked about because, once again, going back to when we talked about financial literacy, if you make bad decisions, your credit rating could be negative, which will impact the decisions or the opportunities that you get access to. For an entrepreneur, it's really important to know what your credit rating is because that may help you to make decisions about how you fund your business how you fund the growth of the business or acquisitions of other assets. Show that you can borrow money, spend it and pay it back. I'm like, wow, that's what you respect. And it's like, that lesson shouldn't, I shouldn't have to learn that lesson at 20 something. I feel like something like that should be taught in school. Yo, I'm gonna ramp around this year, you know, look. Here comes the big bad, big bad. Come on, baby father. Come, come, come through, man. Now, he was my baby father in the film. 13 years down the line, we've decided to come together to be business partners. Okay, what's going on? We're making some great steps in, you know, wholesale routes to market. So we've now got quite a lot of cash and carries in Birmingham that are now taking on the products. So obviously the baby show, it got cancelled last year because of COVID, so we weren't able to do it. This one's going to be massive. Speaking to the baby show, they said there's a big demographic of expecting mothers. So it might be a lot of mothers that are not even aware yet of any brand they're going to be using. So we really need to capture them on first instance. Funny if you didn't like it. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good, it's good, it's good. You know, our, our route to market really now is, is, is looking for you know, wholesalers that can distribute to the corner shops and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, getting the brand out there to the people. That's what we're all about, really. In terms of budget, I know that you've allocated a nice portion to us, but um, is there any way that we're able to increase that? You say nice portion <laughs> and increase it. I put a lot of money into ads on alone, you know, just content creation, the team. We've got a YouTube series coming out, a whole Nala's Baby YouTube channel. With so I'll take that as a no. Stick February. to the budget. Because <laughs> you see you guys. <laughs> Does crack to rest? No, I don't, you know, I don't. I don't know how I make time. I don't even think that I have enough time to just focus on me. I'm just, I'm just working, bro, all the time. Like, constantly. But to be honest, when I'm with my daughter, I have to cut off everything by force. Dad, I need you now. In an album camp out of London, just you and the producers, all you speak about during them seven days or two weeks is music. If I had my way, I would live in a house like that. To me, that is the closest I've been to paradise. When I do have my spare time, the way I unwind is playing FIFA, I'm not gonna lie, like that's, that's my back. That's me, that's Malisha. <laughs> The reason why I do everything over the music right now is it wasn't a choice. It, there was no option. At the end of 2019, my sister passed away and she died because of um, breast cancer. She left six kids behind and her husband had died three years before that. So now they don't have parents. My mom, she is an angel, queen. She just quit her jobs, just kept them all together, do you know what I mean? Now me, being who I am, and how I am with kids anyway, I felt like it was my responsibility. Six words, I found my treasure in you. Having children allowed me to be who I'm supposed to be. People hating their fathers because they wasn't there for them or this, that and the fourth. And I just wanted to 
kind of <laughs> be that person to show like, yo, being a dad is sick. Before that, it was just music and nothing else. It's also good to inspire a lot of people. I've got so much messages from dad saying, you know what, you made me want to step up and be a better father. In terms of generational wealth, I think it's about us stepping onto ladders that we've only walked past. And I say that to say it's, it's common in other communities for the parents to remortgage the house once the kids get to 18, give them that money, then they they get to, you know, that's their deposit, they get to get their house, do the same thing for their kids. And that's pretty much a grassroots level thing in that community. Whereas for us, it's unheard of. Well, I think for me, it's like generational wealth is a big thing. I, I definitely want to have that for my kids, my sister's kids as well. And just like, just knowing that I've left a legacy behind. As an artist, there becomes certain opportunities that you can create for people. My friend just come out of jail, needed a job. I said, I want you to run this for me. And he was able to do that. And he was able to get, you know, paid and legitimately do something else that was able to come from an opportunity that I created, whether it's hiring your friends to, to, to be your managers or tour managers or whatever it is like. Me and Zion, when we had to go and bring CDs to Birmingham or drop 20 CDs to Manchester, that takes the whole day, bro. By the time you come back, bro, what's happened? Bro, that happened, you know? They came, did it, did it, did it, did it. So, so much little things happen and it's like, because I've been out and come back, I'm like, bro, it's actually not that deep. Like, the world is bigger than the estate. So then it's like, hey, right, next time we're going, can we bring the man in? I'm like, hey, right, I got a show in Bristol. Come, come, we're, we're leaving at nine. You get what I'm saying? So we go Bristol, we come back. And it's just like, just that three or four or two hour journey and coming back does so much for a person, bro. It gives so much purpose. It, it opens the eyes of people that have been walking around with their eyes closed, bro. I like to step into areas where you don't always see us. And I like to show that we can compete everywhere. I am currently looking into having my own salmon line. Makes sense, why am I buying up people's salmon? I have it nearly every day, you know, so this is a big thing. I just want to go to the highest place that I can possibly, as crept, get to and to say I've given it my all and I tried everything and I exhausted all my options to get there. If I'm someone that holds myself in such high regard in literature, then I need to take that elsewhere. Hence why you've got Rich being able to do a book, which is called Rapphology, which we're also at the moment in conversations with being able to implement parts of that book in the curriculum, you know, to help a, you know, a rich or a gets at 11 years old. I'm just focused on camo and I'm focusing on getting my salmon line. That's it. That's 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 what I want and so it's going to happen. And I just want to do something that's so great that it does, you know, inspire a whole nother generation and something that my daughter can be like, yo, my dad smashed it. Any artist that is watching this as well need to come out of the space of I can only do music because you, you can do everything, you know.